Power BI connectors is what every Power BI project starts with. You know, your users come to you, they say, hey, we have this management report, we want to use Power BI to automate it. As part of that, they would expect to automate uh, data extraction uh, into your management report. And this is where Power BI connectors come in place. So when it comes to Power BI connectors, uh, you need to understand the native connectors that are available in Microsoft. Um, you would also need to understand uh, the concept of custom connectors and uh, um, also maybe some off-the-shelf solutions. So uh, in this video, I want to explain all of those concepts. I want to explain how Power BI connectors work as well. Uh, so you can uh, better understand, uh, you know, why some of them are really good, why some of them are not working, and what to do about it. So, uh, let's jump straight in. Um, first of all, we have the Get Data menu in Power BI. This is where uh, most of the native connectors work. Uh, Microsoft have a team of coders that do those uh, integrations with Power BI and uh, they release them with every update. Um, as you would expect, the native connectors are pretty self-explanatory. You just uh, pick a data source and uh, enter your credentials. Uh, after that, you will start receiving your data. Uh, so, um, I want to explain some things about this menu. We won't spend too much time here because it's pretty self-explanatory, but I will explain some things. So, first of all, um, you have local files and uh, folders um, and databases. So, I would kind of group, group them together because uh, it's kind of like an intermediary uh, for your um, for your Power BI reports. So lots of people um, would have data on Xero, for example, and they would extract data into Excel manually, automatically, uh, and then they would connect Excel to Power BI. It's a perfectly viable option, uh, you know, it does have uh, its own limitations, sometimes, especially if it's manual, uh, but lots of people do that. Uh, but uh, uh, a big advantage of this approach is uh, uh, the loading speed. So the loading speed of your reports is likely going to be uh, better uh, if you're using Excel or some sort of a database. Um, and so later in this video I will explain why. So the next group of uh, uh, connectors is uh, other Microsoft services. As you would expect, Microsoft own a lot of software products. They own uh, SharePoint, they own uh, uh, you know, Microsoft Access. Uh, so uh, again, as you would expect, all of those um, different software products, they integrate with Power BI. Uh, that's basically how um, Microsoft competes with others, by creating those uh, ecosystems. So if uh, your data source is owned by Microsoft, then the uh, first thing you want to do is go to the Get Data menu and search for it, because uh, the chances are Power BI has a native integration with it. Uh, now, the rest of data sources we have here are kind of uh, online uh, data sources. So uh, you need to understand how they work, right? Um, and it's it's the same concept for 99% of them. Uh, let's take Salesforce, for example. So uh, Salesforce provides an API. Uh, an API is essentially uh, kind of a gateway to connect to data. Uh, API um, is a kind of gateway that uses HTTP requests, uh, kind of the same requests you send in your browser when you go to Salesforce. Um, and uh, um, Microsoft developers have written the code that send those requests uh, automatically, uh, or you could say programmatically. So. 
um, they've coded a, a pop-up window where you enter your Salesforce credentials and uh, once you enter those credentials uh, an HTTP request is sent to uh, Salesforce and uh, um, that's that's basically uh, the first request, the authentication request. Um, the uh, next step is sending a request to retrieve a table. And uh, um, you know, once you connect to Salesforce, um, you will see the list of tables in the preview. Uh, what happens is once you select uh, a table and decide to preview it, uh, you know, one request is sent to Salesforce. So it's only one request, you know, they, they, um, uh, they give you like 10 rows of data that you can see. And uh, if you click load data, then more requests are sent for this particular table. It could be like a hundred requests to retrieve one table of data. Right, so um, that's essentially what you need to know is uh, uh, those requests um, are sent. It's using uh, uh, API protocols uh, and requests are sent for uh, individual tables. On top of that, for most APIs, several requests are sent uh, per table. Uh, now, there are some limitations with it. Uh, if you ever use Salesforce objects, you will know that this connector is quite problematic. Uh, the reason is it has uh, uh, like 200 different tables and uh, you would end up searching for the data you need in a lot of different tables. And after a while, it starts working very slowly. Um, the reason it works slowly is because Power BI has a limitation for kind of how many requests you can send um, before your speed drops. So, um, you know, Power BI sends a lot of requests um, uh, with a reasonable speed, uh, but the limit is not clear. Like, I've just found this through trial and error. Uh, after a while, the speed of data extraction drops significantly significantly and you end up uh, spending so much time in the preview window uh, like waiting for your data to load uh, so yeah like uh, um, that's another thing you need to know power bi cannot send uh, a very large volume of those requests uh, and if power bi starts working very slowly it's because uh, you sent a lot of requests uh, to an API. Uh, right, so now that we've uh, discussed uh, the technicalities in terms of how it works, uh, we'll, uh, uh, we need to cover the topic of uh, Power BI custom connectors. Uh, as I explained before, uh, Microsoft have a team of coders that writes the code to get connectors into this menu. Um, but on top of that, they allow Power BI developers to write their own code to, um, uh, to put a data source in here. So it's like a custom connector that you can write yourself and get into this get data menu. Um, here is what it would look like. So you would essentially uh, go to uh, go to your uh, computer and you would go to documents. Uh, inside of documents you would have uh, a Power BI folder, Power BI desktop, and you would have a folder custom connectors. Now inside of this folder you can place multiple files. Uh, as you can see, I have multiple um, Power BI connectors in here. Like zero, pre go high level. Um, those files, uh, they use .NES extension. Uh, that's uh, the extension you need to use uh, in order to open, uh, open the file or use the file. So .NES is kind of like an archive. It's an archive folder, 
so those files would contain uh, the code for your connectors. I've just loaded WinRAR on my computer and I've opened uh, one mess file and uh, I just want to show you that it contains the M code. Um, M is essentially a programming language which is used inside of Power Query and here we can see some of the uh, code for extracting data uh, from zero. So essentially uh, we set up the scopes for data extraction, we uh, write the code individually to extract data from those HTTP requests, and uh, as a result we get the tables in the preview and we get the tables um, uh, once we extract data to um, Power BI. So, I'm not going to share all of this because obviously that's uh, something that um, is valuable and something that we wrote, but if you're interested in extracting data from zero, then feel free to contact me. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, what you need to know is uh, you can write your own custom connectors this way. Now, uh, you can also um, do a bit more research on uh, 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 on this, uh, so uh, this is a documentation on how to create custom connectors using Power BI. Uh, so essentially it's just a Power Query SDK. Um, you would, uh, SDK is kind of like um, uh, a package of functions which help you write uh, custom connectors for uh, Power BI using M language. Now, custom connectors is a great way to extract data from your source if uh, you know you don't have a native connector. But it will have all the same limitations as uh, you know the native connectors inside of Power BI. If you want to work around those limitations, uh, a great way that we found is extracting data uh, from. Uh, um, your data source using Python. So we would extract uh, data using Python into an Azure SQL Server database and uh, then connect the data, uh, like the database to Power BI. And uh, we found that this approach is working really well because um, you don't have the same limitations. Like you can send more requests uh, through a database uh, without drop, like drop in speed of your data extraction. Um, so um, yeah, if, if you are extracting a lot of data or you are extracting data from multiple data sources, it's all often more efficient to extract data into a database first, uh, instead of connecting it directly to Power BI. So um, uh, the final thing is uh, you can search for off-the-shelf solutions for extracting data uh, into Power BI. There are lots of companies that do Power BI connectors and uh, I'll just show you uh, one of them. So as you can see, uh, like at Vitiport, we also provide some Power BI connectors. So. Uh, we provide uh, connectors to those following data sources and uh, uh, our approach is essentially ex extracting data from uh, those different APIs and uh, um, inserting it into another SQL Server database. Uh, after that you would get uh, your uh, Azure SQL Server connect uh, connection string which you can use to extract data into Power BI. So, uh, other providers, they might use uh, some different, um, some other different approaches. Uh, a very common one that you see is uh, by using ODBC protocols. Um, so, um, yeah, there is no right or wrong. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, whatever, um, whatever fits your scenario. So, uh, you can search for, for example, I, I don't know, let's say you're running your email marketing through MailChimp. 
So you can always search in Google MailChimp Power BI connector. Um, Google will give you some results for this particular connector uh, and uh, um, you know, you, you will find uh, this solution off the shelf. So um, just know that if you don't have a connector and you don't know how to code a connector, you always have an option to get an off the shelf solution for you. So uh, that's probably the last thing that you need to know about Power BI connectors. If you have any questions, then feel free to leave them in the video. And uh, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to answer any of them in the comments. So thank you.